Fans continue to crowd baseball stadiums nationwide and pundits believe spectator attendance will hit over 10 million this season, while Korea's football team gears up for its 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifier match against Palestine at the Seoul World Cup Stadium tonight. We have details on this edition of Issues and Insiders. Hello and welcome. You're watching Issues and Insiders for this Thursday afternoon, September 5th here in South Korea. I'm Min San Hee. Today, we touch upon the latest headlines in the sports arena here in the country. For this, I have sportscaster Jason Lee live on the line. Jason, it's great to have you on. Great to be back. I also have Yu Ji Ho at Yonap News Agency with us. Jio, welcome back. Well, thanks for having me today. Jason, let's begin with details about the surging spectators at baseball stadiums. I mean, how do their numbers compare to those of last year? Oh, numbers this year have blown away last year. Last year, the total attendance was barely over 6 million in total attendance, whereas this year, they're already over 9 million, which is already a new KBO record. And who knows, perhaps... Uh, the talk has been, maybe they'll top 10 million. I think there's a good chance. We'll have to wait and see. Right. And, and staying with what Jason has just said, Chio Pundits do believe that baseball uh, spectators this season will mark over 10 million. What would you say are the broader implications of this milestone, if hit? Yeah, you know, 10 million fans in a professional sports league, that obviously has never been done uh, in Korean professional sports. And, you know, this is a country of about 50 million people. So... You know, I am no mathematician, but 10 million people going to baseball games out of uh, in a country out of with uh, 50 million people. This is about 20 percent of the population. So this is a staggering number if you put it in that uh, context. And uh, out of 10 teams in the KBO league right now, uh, six teams are uh, average. Oh, actually, all, all 10 teams are averaging uh, 10,000 plus fans uh, per per game at home, and four teams have surpassed uh, 1 million fans for this season, and two. Others uh, might join them in the coming days. So that's more than half the league uh, drawing 10,000 plus uh, on average at, at home at their home stadiums. And that's never been done before in the history of this league dating back to 1982. And uh, KBO has really come a long way. You know, just a few years ago, uh, you know, the stadiums were, were so empty that you could literally ride a bicycle through the stands. Um, and, uh, you know, people would just... Uh, they would just walk in, you know, buy tickets at will, even on the weekends. But now it's virtually impossible. It's virtually impossible to get tickets on the game day uh, if there's a big matchup coming up on on weekday, even on even on a weekday. So uh, again, this is a pretty remarkable progress uh, compared to just a few years back when you know the teams had trouble selling tickets. Right. And, and, and Jason, how do you explain, I mean, what do you suppose are the factors fueling the recent public fervor for baseball here in the country? I think there's a lot of reasons. I could probably write an essay on the number of reasons, but let's start with the biggest one. The biggest one is that COVID-19 is in the rearview mirror. So uh, 6 million fans last year, like I mentioned, but I think a lot of people were still a little bit hesitant to be in public places, without masks and cheering and, you know, who knows uh, what else coming out of their mouths when doing so. So I think the reservation of that is now gone. People are now willing to spend money on entertainment as well post-COVID. So that's been a huge factor. I think another really big factor is the Kia Tigers. The last time that the KBO broke or set a new attendance record was back in 2017. And in 2017, the Kia Tigers not only led the entire regular season, but they also won the Korean series. So we're seeing that again this year. The, the Kia Tigers are in first place right now. They have been for much of the season. And what that results in is not just attendance being up in Gwangju, where the Kia Tigers played their home games, but the Kia fans are everywhere. There's a lot of Gwangju natives that live in Seoul, that live in Incheon, that live in um, other areas around the capital area. So not just in Gwangju, but uh, when the Kia Tigers play in Seoul against LG or against Doosan or against uh, the Kiyong Heroes, you're seeing a lot of Kia fans attending those games. So there's plenty of factors. 
also success breeding success. The more that we talk about, you know, new records being set in attendance, we're talking about it more so it brings more awareness and people figure, oh, hey, we should go to these games because everybody else is. And also this year, there are new rules that have been implemented in the KBO. It's going to be a little bit of novelty, people wondering what the new rules are and how it's affecting the games. It's supposed to be in a positive way. So I think a lot of people are going to the games to check those out. And then the one last ironic thing I'll say is COVID-19 may have helped the long-term success of the KBO because during the pandemic, there was no Major League Baseball in the U.S. and they were actually airing uh, KBO games in North American sports channels. And I think what that did is when people come to Korea now, after watching those games in North America, they're thinking, oh, but one of the things that I have to do in Korea is I have to go watch a baseball game. We're seeing way more foreign fans than we ever have before at KBO stadiums. Right, and staying with the people venturing into these baseball stadiums, Chiu, how do you explain the tangible rise that is in the number of young female spectators at the games? Yeah, so it's been uh, pretty, uh, I guess, impressive. And also a little bit of a surprise, I think, uh, you know, the fact that nearly 50% of the new fans that have started watching KBO are women. And about 31% of uh, those new fans are in their, in their, in their 20s. Uh, many of them singles too, uh, so you know they have some disposable income, I would say, and uh, I think they're looking for uh, some uh, ways to entertain themselves. And I think going to a ball game in, in the KBO uh, presents relatively inexpensive sort of entertainment option. Uh, you know, you can you can be outdoors, you can bring your own food. Uh, the concession foods uh, they're not that expensive compared to you know going to restaurants and bars. Uh, on downtown and uh you know you can just i guess sing and dance all you want you can scream from the top of your lungs and nobody will bet an eye uh in fact you would stand out i think by being quiet in a kbo game so uh there's a there's a lot of uh you know there's there, there different ways to kind of have the outlet for your i guess energy if you will if you're at a kbo game uh just you know two, two to three hours being outdoors uh singing and dancing just generally having a good time uh, so I, I think all of the different factors kind of come to play uh, and, uh, you know, tickets being tickets to KBO games being relatively inexpensive compared to, you know, let's say going to movies or spending money in the bars and restaurants and, and whatnot. So I think some of the young people have chosen to uh, kind of uh, throw themselves into in the baseball. And also, you know, uh, at, the, at the risk of maybe sounding a little bit superficial, I think some fans have taken a liking to some of the, I guess, uh, good-looking ball players happen to be pretty good at baseball themselves. So, uh, you know, again, a, a lot of different factors at, at play here, and uh, with with the rise of uh, female fans, and also teams have done a pretty good job of uh, marketing toward uh, that demographic, uh, especially in the last couple of years. Right. All that being said, then, Jason, here's the million-dollar question: What do you propose to make this phenomenon a permanent reality? Well, I think the first thing they should do is they should be paying uh, foreign sports writers more to promote the league more. So uh, there's a little shout out to uh, Jiho there. But I think in all honesty, they're doing a lot of the right things. I think um, adapting the North American rules, the new rules that MLB has implemented uh, better late than never, uh, is a step in the right direction. Hopefully, they'll bring in the rest of those rules uh, next season or in the near future as well with the pitch clock and the uh, throws, the number of throws uh, to uh, pick off players as well. But uh, one of the things that I like is that they're redeveloping the stadium. There's been a lot of talk about it, but they're intensifying in particular for Chumshield Baseball Stadium. There's been talk of turning that into an indoor stadium with a hotel. It's going to take some time, maybe five or six years, but at least they're heading in the right direction. Um, all the stadiums or all the teams in the league now essentially either have or have plans uh, to bring in new stadiums, except for the Lotte Giants in Busan. So the one thing I would like to see uh, in the near future is, uh, if not uh, a new stadium, certainly plans for a new stadium. And I think that would help the uh, image of the league uh, as well. Right.
Moving from baseball then to football, Chiho, tonight, later this evening, Team Korea's head coach Hong Myung-bo faces his first test, if you will, as his players face Palestine in a qualifier match for the 2026 FIFA World Cup. That being said, Chiho, what can you tell us about his 26-member roster? Right, so this is going to be a first match for Hong Myung-bo in his second tour of duty with the national team. He previously coached this national team from 2013 to 2014. Uh, he resigned after failing to get the team past the group stage at the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. So he's back uh, for the second go around, uh, try to get this country to the World Cup in 26 and potentially into the knockouts. Uh, this current squad, pretty intriguing mix of some, uh, I guess, savvy veterans and some young bloods, uh, up and comers. We've got usual suspects like Son Heung Min, Kim Min Jae, Lee Gang In, and uh, Hwang Hee Chan, the guys from uh, big clubs in Europe. Uh, but on the other hand, We've got four new faces who weren't their first call-ups to, to the senior international, the senior national team, uh, led by the 18-year-old sensation Yang Min Hyuk for Kangwon FC. Uh, he's been the best young player in the K League so far this year. Uh, so far this year, these all the first-year players with eight goals and five assists. And also, he he signed a contract with Tottenham Hotspur back in July, so he's going to join Tottenham uh, in January next year after finishing out his K League season with Kangwon this year. Uh, potentially future teammate of a Son Heung Min at Tottenham if, if uh, Yang does make the big club at some point. Uh, so he's the one guy that I think carries a lot of expectations. He's already one of the youngest players to be called up to the national team. And if he does get into a match or in, in the next couple of weeks, uh, you know, Korea will play Oman next week. If he does score in one of those two games, he will become the second youngest player to score for South Korea. Uh, so you know, my guess is Hong Myung-bo might give, might give some of the young guys a chance to play. Uh, given some of the fatigue level for the guys that have come in from Europe and mid-season, uh, haven't taken the long flights, uh, you know, they've, they might be still a little bit jet-lagged. So, and uh, you know, given the fact that Korea will play some underdogs like Palestine and Oman in the next two matches, I think you know, this, these are just the kind of low-pressure uh, relatively low pressure matches where young young guys can just go in and play. So uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Hong does give those guys a chance to play at some point. Uh, so th th I think that's one of the things to keep an eye on whether those uh, you know youngsters can make their international debut for Korea. Right. And and Jason, do you also agree that Korea Team Korea is looking ahead to a low pressure match against Palestine tonight? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, Korea is ranked, what, uh, 23rd in the world right now, whereas Palestine is ranked, I think, 96. So clearly when it comes to, uh, you know, ability, uh, star power, I mean, as uh, Gio just mentioned, Korea's got some sports stars that play uh, in Europe, whereas Palestine's uh, top players, they've got a guy that uh, plays in the Swedish league and another that plays in the Belgian league. But for the most part, uh, most of their players are, are domestic as well. So uh, Korea currently has a huge advantage when it comes to talent. And I would say it's not going to be just about winning this game for Hong Myung-bo. Because if Korea were to go on to a one nothing victory or a 2-1 win, I think Hong Myung-bo would probably receive a lot of negative reviews from the media. So I think he needs to win like a two-goal or a three-goal victory. And as Jiho mentioned, the other thing that that would do is if they can get up to an early lead, it would allow him to get some playing time for the new guys and the young players like Yang Min Hyuk has mentioned. Because obviously a lot of fans want to see these young guys play to see what they can do. But you really don't want to do that if the game is tied midway through the second half. So they need to get up to an early lead, at least a 2-3 goal lead, and then get some of these guys the younger kids experience. Right. Meanwhile, Chio, this particular match will be played at the Seoul World Cup Stadium, and pundits believe it's not going to be a full house. How, what do you say? Yeah, so the stadium's capacity is about 65,000, and the last uh, couple of matches that were, that were played there, they were sold out, uh, I guess, within minutes. Uh, and then as of uh, Wednesday afternoon, I guess Thursday morning, there were about 5,000 or 6,000 tickets still unsold. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be out there in a couple of hours myself, and I'll be curious to see how many people will be there uh, at the box office, ticket office, to try to pick up some remaining tickets on match day, uh, which used to be pretty much impossible whenever Korea played at, at the stadium. So, uh, you know, there, there's some different factors. The prices for tickets uh, have gone up, especially in the home cheering section behind one of the goals. 
uh, from 35,000 won to 50,000 won. So that's not a minor increase, uh, if you were, if you ask me. So, and some other areas, some other sections, they saw their ticket prices go by as much as 10,000 won. Uh, you know, the prices for the designated cheering section went up because, according to the Korea Football Association, uh, that's according to the guidelines set by the Asian Football Confederation. The, uh, they want the host countries to ensure the ticket prices provided to the away team do not exceed the price of comp uh, comparable tickets sold to the public in the host country. So it basically means they've got to be charging uh, the away team and the home team at the same, at the same rate. So, uh, you know, that has uh, angered some of the fans who were, were going to the cheering section behind the goal. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a massive boycott uh, for, for some of the fans, or uh, I, I, I suspect there will be still some fans out there tonight uh, try to pick up some remaining tickets. But uh, this may not end up. Uh, this may end up being a not sellout for the first time in quite some time. Right. Moving forward, Jason, Thursday's game kicks off the third round of the 2026 FIFA World Cup Asian qualifying phase for Team Korea. What does the future hold for our players in this particular category? Well, Korea should qualify easily for the World Cup in 2026. And I think they normally would have anyways. But you've got to also consider that the number of countries that are going to be competing in 2026 has been expanded from 32 to 48. So now that there are 16 extra qualified teams that can make it in, uh, Korea should be a no-brainer as they've qualified for 10 straight World Cups and now it's become easier for them. All they have to do is finish in the top two in this phase of the group period and they will automatically uh, qualify for the tournament. And that should be honestly pretty easy. Their group is quite easy. So I think um, I think the bigger question to, to look forward to is when they're qualifying they need to win every single game and uh, keep their world rankings up. They're currently at 23rd in the world. And because 48 countries are now going to be qualifying, they're going to be uh, 12 groups of four. And ideally, Korea wants to make sure that they're not going to be in the bottom 12 of that because then they're going to have three teams that are going to be stronger than them at the World Cup. So. They need to do well in this qualifying round in terms of finishing first in the group to make sure that they can finish higher than the bottom 12 teams of the round of 48. And ideally, if they can even increase uh, their rankings and you know maybe win some uh, important exhibition matches as well, if they can get into the, uh, the top half uh, rather than the bottom half of that uh, 48 group, then it would make uh, their chances much easier to qualify for the second round of uh, the World Cup. Right, we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. All right, Jason, as always, thank you so much for your time and your thoughts, and you have fun to at tonight's game. Thank you very much, both. Right, that ends Thursday's edition of Issues and Insiders. Thank you for watching. We'll return same time tomorrow, so do join us then.